Hello and welcome back to Off-Road Yota Exploration. My name is Kai and this is my 2017 Toyota Tacoma. Today I'm going to do a review on my Total Chaos upper control arms. As we can see here, these have been on the truck for about 80,000 miles and over five years. The uniball has come a little bit loose as you'll see in this video. So we're going to do a full service, changing out the uniball. We're going to put in some new bushings in the back. And I'm also going to do a full review on these upper control arms, but also discuss the options that you have when choosing an upper control arm. So let's get into it. We'll get these taken off the truck and then we'll talk about some options. So now we have the wheel off. We'll have to loosen this nut over here. And then we'll just have to undo the uniball over here. And then once this is loose, we can pull the bolt that goes all the way through here, out forward, and then the whole upper control arm will come out this way. We'll have to take off the zip tie here that holds in the ABS line. We'll reattach that once we put the bracket back on. So we've taken this bolt out from in here. It connects the upper control arm to the spindle. And these are the misalignment spaces to the go in between the uniball. And then this one, this one seems to be stuck in here. Um, we could try and force it out, um, but you can also just leave it in there because it will be reinstalled with the bolt once that goes back together. So we can use a little bungee here to hold up the spindle, just so it doesn't put too much strain on the brake line and the ABS line. So those are still free. Um, the bolts, the wrench sizes you'll need for the top is a 21 millimeter, and the bottom one is a 22 millimeter, and then for the back bolt that runs all the way through, we'll need a 19 millimeter. So we'll get that taken out, and then we'll have the upper control arm free, and we can start cleaning it up and replacing the bushings and the inner ball. So we'll get to it. So I've removed the bolt and the washer on the, this side here. So now the bolt is free on this side. Um, on this side here, the design from Toyota is not very great. Because they install the suspension before they put the body on. So this little seam that runs along here is in the way of this bolt coming out. So we need to bend that out of the way a little bit. Um, hopefully I'll have enough space here before, behind my reservoir. Otherwise I'll have to take that off and bend that out of the way. And then we can get the bolt to go out. And then we can get the upper control arm out of here. So we'll see if we can get that to work. see over here the bolt the upper control arm is right over there and the bolt needs to come through this way so there's a little bracket here holding this cable box in there so we just need to take it looks like a 10 millimeter or maybe an 8 millimeter bolt out there to get this bracket off so that the bolt can come out through that way so we'll get this bracket removed and then hopefully we can get the fault to come out there.
make sure you get all the washers. There should be one on each side, so four in total. So now we have the up control arm out. We're gonna clean it up and then we'll look at what we need to do to service it. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, upper control arm, as you can see, it's quite dirty. Some of the grease comes out of the bushings. It's got some dirt on it and stuff, so we'll clean all of that up. These are the washers. These are just the bolts that come out of it. So we'll get everything cleaned up. Yeah. is the press tool that we'll use from Total Chaos. Now we'll use to push out the uniball and push the new one in. And then here we have the bushings that will replace these ones. And these are the uniballs from Total Chaos. So we'll get it cleaned up and then we'll look at that. can see the uniball and it's quite loose in there obviously nowhere near that it would be coming out however there's a fair play, bit of play in it so it's time for these to be replaced um, but definitely held up great 80,000 miles Lots of highway miles, but also a lot of off-roading. So these have held up great. So this is the upper control arm from Total Chaos for the third gen Tacoma. Used the bushings. Also still look in great shape. Um, I will be replacing them, but They've held up really well. Don't seem to have any issue with them. So, looks good. So before I start reviewing the Total Chaos upper control arms, I'm gonna talk about aftermarket upper control arms and a few of the options and variations they are. And that will help with my review, just talking about what options I've picked and why I've picked them. So we can look here. Here we have uh, my Total Chaos upper control arm that we just removed, that cleaned up. I still have to change out the uniball and the bushings, but I'm gonna compare them to, these are the SPC upper control arms for the third gen Tacoma. They are a great aftermarket option as well, but they do have some other option, other styles that vary from the Total Chaos ones. So for the Total Chaos, ball joint. They use a uniball style. Uh, although this is very exposed ball joint because there's nothing protecting it so the dirt and everything can get in it. It still does a good job of keeping most of that out uh, but it is a very strong option and these uniballs hold up for a long time. The SPC uses a similar ball joint as a stock. So this is a sealed ball joint with a rubber boot over it. Um, these ones can also easily be replaced. There's just a bolt, a nut on the back that holds this on. So it can easily be replaced by removing that nut and removing it from the spindle and then putting a new one on. So those are the two styles of joints that you can have in it with an upper control arm. Next we can talk about the different styles of bushings so the upper control arms from Total Chaos use a polyurethane bushing to connect to the frame. So this is a very hard plastic around a metal sleeve that connects to the frame of the vehicle. This does not allow a lot of movement, which makes it pretty stiff, which is great to reduce the movement of the tire in the wheel well but it can also be a noisier option and it does need to be serviced with grease regularly. 
another style, which the SPC ones are similar again to the stock ones, where they also have a metal sleeve in the center, but then they have a rubber insert that connects the center to the outside, but only has limited movement and how much it can move. This is a more silent option and works really great, but it can have a little bit of restriction on the movement up and down. And it also allows a little bit more movement in the upper control arm. So as the tire gets pressure from the front or the back, it can move around a little bit. There is another style of connection to the frame, which is a heim joint. That is just a metal sleeve that connects between the bolt and then it has heim joints that the frame of the up control arm connects to. So those are the main differences between upper control arms. They're obviously different shapes and the way that they're fabricated. Obviously you can see this one just has a tubular style, which is very common, whereas the SPC ones are more of a forged bracket. Um, there are also a lot of billet options that are available that have different options from uniballs to sealed ball joints. So there are a lot of options when it comes to upper control arms and different benefits and drawbacks to each. So now I'll talk a little bit more specifically about the Total Chaos upper control arm and specifically why I chose this one over the other styles. Firstly, I'll talk why I picked the options or what options I wanted in my upper control arm and how it led me to the Total Chaos. I wanted the polyurethane style bushing to connect to the vehicle to reduce the amount of movement in the connection so that the tire in the vehicle doesn't move too far back or forward, um, which can cause you to lose momentum when you're trying to get over an obstacle, but it can also cause the tire to start rubbing in areas where it usually wouldn't when it gets pressure on it. This style is a little bit louder. It does do a little bit of squeaking and stuff and it requires maintenance by needing to be greased every couple thousand miles. Um, but for me, that was a worthwhile sacrifice to get the other benefits that I've mentioned. Additionally, for the uniball option that I selected over the sealed ball joint, although with these SPC ball joints, they do allow the same, if not more, amount of um, articulation. Um, they are also quieter, um, but they have no, been known to wear out faster. So the uniball, it's a very strong option. It has a lot of angle that it can allow the suspension to articulate. It is a little bit noisier as well, um, but just with the strength and reliability of these, I've chosen to go with the uniball over the sealed ball joint. The Total Chaos up control arms also do not allow for any adjustment in relation to alignment. Um, you install it in one way and that's the position of the up control arm. There's no adjustment involved or anything. As opposed to where the SPC up control arms, there are a lot of different configurations that you can install the uniball. You can move it forward, backward, side to side. Adjust, helping to adjust the caster, but also the uh, camber of the wheel. So you do have more adjustment with this, uh, but with that you also sacrifice a little bit of space because the upper control arm comes out a little bit further to allow for that movement. It does go a little bit closer to the wheel so and tire, so you might not have as many options to run different wheel offsets and tire widths. So with everything there are benefits and drawbacks to each option and for me the total chaos uh, tubular 
uniball style upper control arms fit all those. There are many different manufacturers that offer these. Same style, same bushings and ball joints. Uh, I had selected Total Chaos just because it's a well-known brand. They stand behind their product. Um, you can easily get replacement parts as I have and in a timely manner. So that's why I chose them from the beginning. I'm still very happy with them. I'm happy to service them now, get the parts replaced, and then we'll go from there. One drawback about the Total Chaos up control arms that I've found, or at least is for me, is that most upper control arms, just the same way as Total Chaos, that do not have any adjustment in the uniball location, automatically come with the location that it is one degree further back in the wheel well than the stock location, because they assume that you're gonna be running a lift and this will help to adjust for the caster for the wheel. Um, it does a great job of doing that. However, you do lose a little bit of space because it does slightly move the wheel back in the wheel well, um, causing clearance issues. Uh, with the left lift that I run and the way that I have my lower ball, lower control arm positioned, it would help if this was in the stock location or even slightly forward, just to help with some clearance on the um, body of the vehicle. However, I haven't found a up control arm that does move the uniball or the spindle location forward to help with the clearance. Um, I don't think that is really makes such an issue just because it is so high up on the spindle, the amount that it does move the tire back does not have that much of an impact. So these are still my choice of upper control arms that I would be running. So we'll start by replacing the uniball. First thing we'll need to do is use some snap ring pliers to get the snap ring out of here. Now we'll need to use the press tool to push out the bearing. So this, we'll need to push the bearing from this side out against this side. And this bearing tool will push against that. So what we'll need to do, put these together like so. this side and there we go so we'll have the position like this so this is how we position it as we this is the side that we this is the side that we took the snap ring off so as we tighten this, it will push the uniball out that way. We can go from there.
Lord. again to install the new, new uniball so we'll keep that attached and we'll get everything going so here we have the old used uniball There's a little bit of play in it Put that aside. And here we have the new uniballs with fresh snap rings. So here we have the new uniball. As you can see, it's impossible to you turn the ball within the housing by hand and with this one it moves freely so we'll get the bucket cleaned up a little bit and then we'll use the tool and get that reinstalled so now we've got all nice and cleaned up in here so We'll go ahead and get the new uniball installed. We'll start by putting it in. We'll try and use the bushing press, um, but that sometimes might not get it aligned properly. So we'll start with that. And if we have to align it, we'll take it off and use a block and a hammer to align it correctly. So. We'll go. Make sure you push it in from the bottom side. There'll be one side that has a lip, and then one side where the snap ring goes. So this will go in from the snap ring side. So put this in position. So we started getting it going. It looks like it's putting Shing at a bit of an angle. So I'll just use a hammer to tap it that way a little bit to see if we can straighten it up and then we'll keep going from there. stops and we can have a look and it looks like it has cleared where the snap ring goes so now we can remove the press tool
There we go, everything is in place. And you can see the space for the new clip to go in place. Go ahead and grab one of the new snap rings. Make sure it's nice and clean. We'll get that installed using the snap ring pliers. They went in with no issue. So now we can see here for comparison with the other new snap ring washer and the one that was installed. And it's nice sitting nicely in the groove there. And everything's good to go. So we're all done with replacing this uniball. We'll go ahead and change out the bushings. So next we'll have to remove the sleeve from the bushings and we're going to try using a 3 8 inch driver, pushing, holding it up, centering it on there and using the hammer to push them out. So now we have our two sleeves, we'll set those aside and those will need to be cleaned up. And now we need to remove our bushings. Best way to do that is with the flathead screwdriver on the side. Push it in and then hammer it out. go. We've got the bushings out. So we'll go ahead and clean up the upper control arm. We'll clean up the sleeves and the washers and then we'll install the new ones. There we go. We've got those all nice and cleaned up. Go ahead and get the new bushings installed and the new sleeves. And these are the original bushings that came with it. The bushings themselves don't look bad. The grease has definitely been in there for a little bit too long. But the bushings look great. But we'll replace them with the new ones. Should be good to go. Okay, so we got the sleeves cleaned up as best we could. So we'll go ahead and get the 
new bushings installed in here. Then we'll add some lube and put them the, reinstall the sleeves. Total Chaos provides some super lube, which is great lube. Um, you want to make sure not to use any lube on the inside of the sleeves here. Uh, that needs to be a direct contact with the bushing. And then, but once we have those installed, we're going to be inserting some grease on the inside here for the sleeve to slide in. And the grease is there to help lubricate the sleeve so that the sleeve can turn inside of the polyurethane bushing. So we'll go ahead and insert the bushings and then we'll lube it up and get the sleeves installed. So these bushings install fairly easily. They just push right in. You can use a hammer or so to help get them going. the new bushings installed. Now we're going to lube up the inside a little bit and then get some grease in there and then push the sleeves in. It's okay to get some grease on the outside here. We're going to be putting some on here anyways before we install them so that the washers can have some lubrication between them when they get installed. We get some grease in there, we can help work some of it into the grooves. Once we, this is just to help it get installed onto the vehicle. Once we have installed it, we're going to use these grease fittings to pump enough grease in there to keep it nice and lubricated. As I said, we can put some on the outside here as well. We'll put them on there before we install it back on the vehicle. Now we can take our bushing, our sleeve, sorry, and get it installed in there. Just need to get it aligned and then we use the high mount to get it pushed in. When you're installing it, it may want to push out the other bushing, so it'll be good to do it on top of a tabletop where you can have this placed against something and head it down onto it. And there we go. Got it fully inserted. Put some grease on the outside. So now we'll do the same on the other side. There we have it, fully serviced up control arm. We'll go ahead and reinstall it on the vehicle. And then we're gonna just use some, get some grease into these fittings, get these bushings nicely lubricated, and then we'll be good to go. So now we'll go ahead and get the up control arm reinstalled. We'll feed the bolt in through here. We need to make sure that we put a washer on the outside and then on the inside here and then as well as on this side 
where the bolt comes through, put a washer before the up control arm, and then have one on the end before the nut. So we'll get that in there. So I went ahead and greased this side already. You can see the grease coming out on the side here between the washer and the bushing, which is what we want. So go ahead and grease the front side as well. And then we'll be able to tighten up the bolt again. We wanna make sure that the nut is loose when you're pushing the grease in so that the grease has somewhere to escape if the bolt is fully tightened up, it's gonna break the bushings. So when you're installing it, before you put the grease in, don't tighten it all the way. And then when you are greasing it for maintenance, make sure you loosen the nut and then you can grease it and then tighten everything back up again. So go ahead and get the front greased up as well. And then we'll be able to bolt everything back up and be good to go. I'm also using this fitting, which works really nicely. It's called Lock and Lube. It helps nicely to grab onto to grab onto the grease fitting, and it also easily come off. So it works a lot better than the cheap fittings that usually come on the grease guns. I definitely recommend that. Okay, so on this side is also fully greased up. On this side, the lube is coming out over there from where the bolt is. So, a little bit of extra lube there. Once we tighten it all up, we'll make sure to wipe away the excess grease just to prevent too much dirt from gathering around there. So we'll go ahead now and get this bolted back up and then we can tighten up the upper control arm. We'll put a new zip tie on here and then we can put the tie back on and we'll be good to go. Okay, so now we got everything torqued back down to specs. Got both sides greased up, let's torque back down. We reconnected the ABS line here with the zip tie. This is torqued back down. So now we can put the tie back on and this side is good to go. And we'll repeat the same thing on the other side.
Okay, so we got the upper control arm uninstalled on this side. Pretty much the same story as the other side. If you've never changed out the upper control arm, the bolt on this side also goes out that way. However, it's on this side when you reinstall the bolt, it's easier to go back in from this way. So you just need to loosen this 12 millimeter bolt here and then you can move this bracket out of the way and then install the bolt from this side. On the other side, there are two, a few more brackets that are in the way, so it's hard to do it from this side. So it's easier just to reinstall it from the front. Um, but on this side, just know that you can remove this 12 millimeter bolt, move this bracket out of the way, and then install the bolt from that way. So that's why I installed it that way again. So we'll go ahead and get this one all cleaned up and fixed up as well and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we just finished the job. And these are all the tools that we used. Floor jack to jack up the truck. Impact wrench to take off the lug nuts. And then whatever tool you need to remove your lug nuts. We need a grease gun with some grease. Side cutters, torque wrench, a bungee, a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 19 millimeter, 21 millimeter inch. I also need a 22 inch, 22 millimeter socket, flathead screwdriver, rubber mallet, pliers to remove the C clips, some lube, but that is provided with the bushings, a little extension, or something to push out the sleeves from the polyurethane bushings, a lot of paper towels to clean up all the grease, a tool from Total Chaos to press out the uniball, and then I just used some open end wrenches to use the tool, but if you need, have the right size wrenches you could use those as well. So we got the passenger side down as well, everything is bolted and torqued back down. I've cycled the suspension and everything seems to be good and no noises or anything. So that's a wrap on that job. Thank you so much for watching the video today. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Get out there and explore, but don't forget to tread lightly. Cheers.